Hey guys, this is Adwikta. Welcome to the Whispers of the Old Gods um, Arena Meta Analysis. We are at Warlock, and I know I've been not so good about keeping these under 15 minutes, but hopefully we'll have better luck this time. Uh, there's not much to talk about with the Warlock, so that's why I'm hoping to get this under 15. Um, but let's, let's start our list. So first we're looking at the Old Gods Meta, just a quick, uh, quick review. Taunts, right? Lots of taunts. Good for Warlock. But the best taunt is a really big card, which is not good for Warlock. But still, it's a taunt. It's not that bad. Um, generally speaking, having more big things doesn't really fit the uh, the Warlock's agenda. Um, so those cards are um, are pretty much never going to be drafted by a Warlock. But that's all right. There's also plenty of small cards um, as well, even if it shifts a bit towards uh, the bigger side. More importantly, the fact that a lot of the small cards, like the... Um, like a 2-drop, 3-drop, a 4-drop, a 5-drop, like all those cards, there's taunts now at every single um, at every single mana cost, and they're, they all have this additional chance to be um, offered because of the Whispers of the Old God bonus. So, we've said this before, right? In a normal class, you will be drafting taunts like two and a half times more than you used to. With Warlock, that's going to be like three and a half times, because a lot of these cards are just... They fit into what the Warlock would do anyway, right? Like a 3-drop, you need it for the curve. A 2-drop, that's good. Um, Sunwalker's always been a great card for the Warlock. Uh, Cyclotron, not as good, but still, it'll it'll be there. And uh, Cog, uh, Cog Creeper is kind of just good enough that, yeah, it's, it's going to be penalized somewhat for the Warlock. But would you take it over a Yeti as the Warlock? Probably still. It's still an 8 health taunt. And your life is precious. Um, if you're wondering why we're going on and on about how taunts are good for the Warlock, uh, normally your opponent drops a 2-drop, you drop a 2-drop, uh, your opponent may trade with your 2-drop. If you're ever facing a Warlock, like if you're a Warlock, your opponent's correct move is almost always to just hit your face. And then force you to trade. Because you don't have that many buffs, and your buffs are like, what, like power overwhelming? Like, it's not a 2-drop on 2-drop uh, kind of buff, and it kills your minion at the end anyway. So instead, your opponent will want to get you down lower in health, because every 2 health that you have will eventually, at the point in which tempo doesn't matter as much, translate into a card, which is insane. So um, that's why you really care about your health. And taunts really help the Warlock in that aspect. Also, the LOE set is leaving, which means a lot of Discover cards are leaving, which is good, because Discover cards, at the end of the day, are still just like draw a card kind of, uh, kind of cards. And Warlock, really, you can draw cards with your hero power anyway, so you don't need to double up on that as much as other classes do. Uh, but the one area, more so than that Cog Creeper is a really large card, the one reason it's going to hurt the Warlock is that Warlocks have no hard removals. So we talked about how cards like uh, Cog Creeper and other taunts really hurt uh, Hunter because Hunter wants to go face. Warlock doesn't really want to go face so much as it it's lacking the ability to remove anything big off the board. So if you drop a big thing against the Warlock, it may just be worth it for the Warlock to start going face, even though it has no real natural advantages to going face. Uh, in fact, it really wants to clear the board all the time to protect its own health, but... You know, at the point where you drop a um, Force Tank Max and the Warlock has to trade four minions in, it's probably not going to choose to do that. It'll probably try to go face and take the seven damage. Um, and if you're facing a, long, a large board like that and you drop a Force Tank Max, you probably can't afford to hit the Warlock's face unless you have lethal. Um, because the Warlock has more attack than you out on the board, probably. So, Cog Creeper and any large taunt kind of screws that up a bit. Um, Warlocks have no hard removal, you can't get rid of it, and now you can't choose to go face, you have to remove it. So that's bad. But I don't want to overstate how bad it is. Because Warlocks, more than any other class, can recover from losing four cards to one card. That's what that hero power is for. That's the equivalent of letting the Bog Creeper hit your face once. It just takes you a couple turns to, uh, um, to pick up all the cards again, and each turn you're down about two tempo. Which sounds bad, but by the time it's like turn 10 or whatever, it's really not, not all that bad. Um, again, you know, Cog Creeper, not a very good card to have in the meta for the Warlock, generally. Um, and, and also, the, what we, going back to what we were talking about, about going face, especially if games tend to drag on for a little bit longer, even these days, you can see that some games that you play as Warlock, if you're drafting in the style of mid-range, you trade with the board, you win on card advantage, you really start running out of one life just by hero powering, because you've done it like five, ten times, and that's like 10, 20 health, and you've killed off yourself. Um, 
And also, you actually start running out of cards. So it depends on how slow things go. Um, it can be slower by one turn or two turns max. And I think, I think two turns is kind of the cap. I don't even think it'll go. Uh, it'll go that far. To, um, it'll go that slow. Probably more like one turn, one and a half turns slower. Uh, but still, that gets you closer to fatigue. And with the Warlock, every turn you get two cards in the late game. So if it's a turn slower for other people, you're fatiguing by three more cards. Um, and it, it could matter a bit. So the Warlock's at the point where its hero power is really good if the game drags on, but then if the game drags on even more, it's not so good. Uh, so that's kind of uh, both ways. Okay, going to LOE and what's happening with the offering rate being decreased for LOE cards. Dark Peddler, obviously losing a third of its offering rate. Dark Peddler is an insane card. That's going to hurt the Warlock a bit as well. So overall, Warlocks hit this like really good benefit in that there's a lot of taunt cards in the meta, and they can really protect your face. Um, you would almost be playing Warlock kind of like Priest, where you just keep trading on the board, you keep trying to get on the board, and you hit your opponent's face if you can, but otherwise, you realize that as long as you have the board, you have more card advantage than any other class. As the Warlock, you have even more card advantage than the Priest. Um... Except your card advantage ends at a certain point, and it anti-tempos you rather than keeps the tempo the way Priest does. So it's a give and take there. Um, okay, on to new cards. First new card we want to talk about, and, and this is, normally we do a theme with new cards. The Warlocks doesn't really have a theme, uh, so we're just going to go down card by card. Uh, and, and you'll see how powerful these cards are. One, Possessed Villager. It's a Argent Squire. That's, that's all it is. Warrior Squire being okay for the Warlock. It's actually good for the Warlock. I'm okay is kind of underselling it. Um, is it better than a Yeti? It could be around Yeti level, actually. I don't know how where we rate uh, Argent Squire. But just the reason these little cards are really good for the Warlock is because your hero power makes up for it. So if other classes... Like, we talked in Hunter with this, again, um, where you don't want to pick cards that can get pinged away for free. So one, this one really can't. It takes two pings. And you trade this for four mana's worth of tempo. Um, but even if it does get pinged away, for Warlock, it doesn't matter as much, right? It's not one of the only classes that you can still take one drops without fear. And that was always one of its kind of good characteristics in Classic. And I got lost a little bit as it went along, but now we're going back to it. It gets a one drop that's going to be offered frequently, and as the meta shifts back slower to around Classic speed, um, you're, really going to, uh, you're really going to feel the lack of card advantage from the other classes, and Warlock won't be subject to that. Okay, the next card I want to talk about is Dark Shark Councilman. It's a 3 mana, 1 5, after you summon a minion game, plus 1 attack. So it's got that, um, it's got that questing adventure feel to it. Right? It's kind of like a late game card, more so than a 3-drop. As a 3-drop, is not that good. Your opponent will hit into it once, and then you'll play like one minion, and then get it up to a, a 2 whatever is left. Um, so it, it'll trade evenly into 2-drops. Possibly evenly into 3-drops as well, but likely not. So it's just it's not a very good 3-drop. But later on in the game, um, it's a lot better. It's a lot better than a 3-drop, because you play it, you play another card, you already have a 2-5 for a 3-mana, which is really good, and then it'll probably live, because it has 5 health, and then you play another, let's say, 3 cards the next turn, now you got a 5-5, five, five, or a 5 whatever someone else, uh, whatever something hitting into it does. And remember, anything that hits this minion is not hitting your face. Effective taunts, very good, even better for the Warlock. So I think a lot of people are underrating this card right now, because um, it just doesn't jump out at you as a great card, and it's not a 3-drop. The interesting thing about Warlocks, you may think of Warlock as a very curve-focused uh, class, um, which is true in that they have no... Their, their ways to get back on the board are like Hellfires and like Shadow Flames, um, and they're not very consistent. And in the meantime, if your opponent has the board, they're hitting your face, which is really bad for the Warlock. So it is true that the Warlock wants curve cards and wants to get on the board, but in terms of card quality, because the Warlock draws so many cards, the chances of you seeing a card and the chances of a card that's going to be used as a not drop compared to as a drop is actually significantly higher than for any other class. So in terms of how you're valuing the cards, you do want extra drops in order to, um, in order to make sure you don't fall behind, but the value of the card is actually higher when it's played later on, because you'll be playing a lot of these two drops, three drops, one drops way later in the game than with other classes. So uh, this is actually like quite a powerful card. Uh, I think people are underestimating it. Um, and now we get to quite possibly the biggest move, like the most impactful, impactful common card 
uh, that the Warlock has. It is Usher of Souls, and it is not in the arena because it is a Cthune card. But the impact of Usher of Souls, being a Cthune card and a common, cannot be overstated. Uh, I tweeted at, uh, at Ben Brode, and Ben Brode got back to me like within a day, super fast, and confirmed. Uh, the way Cthulhu cards work is, if a Cthulhu card is in a class, it's obviously not going to be offered for the class, but the other cards in that class are going to get even more increased offering rates to make up for it. So that means, rather, let's say the, uh, the bonus is like plus 33%, right? I'm just estimating. Um, if the bonus is plus 33% on Possessed Villager and Dark Shark Councilman, it would normally get 133% the offering rate of a regular card. Instead, now, because you're splitting Usher of Souls into these two cards, and Usher of Souls was going to get 133%, Darkshire Councilman, a possessed villager, will be offered at twice the rate of other Warlock common cards. That's an insanely huge jump. This is not like, oh, it's getting offered like, you know, some percentage more often than the other cards. This is huge. It's almost double the offering rate it would have gotten before. So you will see Possessed Villagers everywhere, and Darkshark Councilmen everywhere. And this isn't just the Warlock, some other classes also have Cthune cards, but this is just the first class that we did that had a Cthune card. Um, and so that's something that you really need to keep in mind, because it shifts the offering rate so much. Um, so for, yeah, for the Warlock, these are just like, uh, like, okay class cards. And I say they're okay class cards, but Warlocks get like disproportionately bad class cards. So they're actually pretty good relative to where Warlock class cards normally are. Like Warlocks typically have bad cards and they have to make up for it with their hero power. Um, so the fact that these cards are above average cards, uh, potentially even good cards, it, it's a pretty big deal for the Warlock. It's not going to stand out. It's not jumping out at you when you look at them, but it's going to make the Warlock a lot more consistent. Um, okay, uh, well, oh, one more thing I want to talk about, because we're just not going to, there's no card that really fits this, but it does affect, it, it is something with the meta. Warlocks have a lot of big cards, more than any other class actually. Warlock has the biggest cards up until this expansion. I think after this expansion, Shaman kind of catches up. Um, but they have uh, Floating Watcher, they have Dread Inferno, they have, uh, I'm blanking on the card's name right now, but it's Doom for you, Doom for me, Doom for everybody. I'm guessing his name starts with a Doom. Anyway, they're huge cards, and they're good cards. But because of the Warlock hero power, they kind of don't fit as well in with the Warlock as they would fit in with potentially another class. So the slower the game gets, the more these big cards become more playable and more viable. And uh, more than any other class, the Warlock's card distribution kind of benefits that. So one more thing to kind of keep in mind when you're looking at the Warlock. Uh, maybe don't feel um, so hesitant about drafting these big demons um, as, as you had before. Because like Floating Watcher is really a ridiculously sick card. And imagine if you had a taunt up and it survives and then you put a Floating Watcher down and you hero power, right? Like game, game over. Um, okay, so moving on to rare cards. Forbidden Ritual, I guess we'll talk about this first. Uh, I don't know why it's not an epic card. I'm actually really, really curious why this is not an epic card, because all the other forbidden cards are epic cards. And it kind of makes sense because it's kind of a weird mechanic. Uh, the epic cards for Warlock is Doom and Renounce Darkness. You can tell why they're epic cards, because they're weird, but it, it's kind of disjointed for Forbidden Ritual to not be an epic card. And so, I don't know. I'm curious about what the Blizzard design decision is here, and I can't really put my finger on it. Um, it's obviously better for the Warlock that this card is a, a rare instead of an epic, because this is quite a good card. Um, it's the first Forbidden card that we've talked about that's not, like, Forbidden Healing, which is, you know, healing. Uh, this one is Summons 1-1 Tentacles. I don't think tentacles are demons, but they're still 1-1 one, one minions. Now, what would usually take one mana to get? Uh, what would usually take one mana to get two 1-1s, one, like as a really good card, Druid has it, uh, with Living Roots? It'll take two mana here, right? It'll be, uh, again, with the normal forbidden, uh, forbidden card stuff, you're always one mana behind, like, in terms of tempo. If you use five mana, you're getting, like, four mana's worth of stuff, because five 1-1s one, is actually worth about four mana, um, regardless of what Stand Against Darkness will try to tell you. So... The good part about it is that it's, if you don't look at it as a drop and you look at it as a way to spend the rest of your mana, it can be played any time and it will help you curve out. And that's just, there's no way to overstate 
how good that effect is. So Forbidden Ritual is going to be a very good card. And and as a top deck too, right? Like you can get well, you can get ten you can only get seven one one tentacles, so I guess you would like hero power and then play it. So it, it it's good. Um and it'll still be good, because seven one one tentacles, it's a lot of card advantage too. It's just the flexibility is I don't know how, if people are, are really, like, feeling just how important this flexibility is on this card. But all the forbidden cards that add tempo are going to be ridiculous. Um, okay, next, Darkshire Librarian. It's a 2-mana 3-2. Yay, 2-drop. Warlock needs some 2-drops. And uh, with the slightly less 2-drop consistency in Whispers of the Old God than we had before, it's good to get one. Um, it's not a good 2-drop. It's Battle Cry's Discard a Random Card. Death Rattle is Draw a Card. Discarding a card, especially on turn two, it removes your options from like three cards or four cards to like two or three cards. That's pretty bad. Like, that's pretty awful. You, because as a good player, you get, you're better than your opponents by deciding what to do. And part of the things of deciding what to do is what card to play. So removing your options um, until this card dies, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, and also, you may, like, keep curve cards or whatever, right? That'll just get discarded, and then who knows what you'll draw. On the bright side, it's a 3-2. It's going to die very quickly. Unless your opponent skips a turn, in which case you don't care too much, uh, you'll be able to, in theory, trade it into your opponent's minion and get the card back. So it's not that much worse uh, than, uh, than a regular 2-drop. And in the late game, potentially, you could play it and it doesn't discard a card. Um, and so when it dies, it just draws you an extra card, which in the late game top deck situation, you, the mana doesn't matter, so you just save two life, which is great for the Warlock. Um, but, but overall, I, I think this is, a, this is a downside. Uh, Spreading Madness. Uh, and we'll do this with Doom. They're both... You know, let's do Spreading Madness first. Um, nine damage split among all characters. I really like this card. It's one mana less than Hellfire. You can do the trades with your minion first to make sure everybody's at, like, lowish health. It, your opponent can't possibly play around this card. One, because it's a rare and they won't play around the card. And two, because it, it hits everything, right? Um, its only downside is that it could also hit your face. But nine damage is good. Like, you may be looking at it and thinking, oh, Arcane Missiles deals 3 damage, and it's all to your opponent's stuff, so this is clearly worse. But Arcane Missiles takes a card. So if you're comparing this to Arcane Missiles, you got to be like, okay, so this card reads, deal 9 damage, randomly split among all characters, then draw 2 cards. Right? Like, it's insane. Um, you can't compare it with, uh, with Arcane Missiles like that. Um, very powerful tool for the Warlock, and it fits the theme, right? I like cards that fit themes. Warlock is the third token class. Um, it has imp uh, Implosion, it has a Gang Boss, it generates tokens. Uh, Druid is the other one, and then obviously Paladin is one. Um, Shaman, kind of, vaguely, who knows, uh, also could be there. So uh, Forbidden Ritual fits that. Uh, you have Darkshire Librarian that's like drawing and discarding cards, Possessed Villagers at one drop. Um, all very good flavorful cards. And Spreading Madness fits the theme, hits everything. Uh, Warlocks use different types of... Um, of resources and converts them all into other types of resources. It's all very free flowing and they have ways to deal all sorts of different damages, right? They deal one damage, two damage, three damage, four damage. Um, so Spreading Madness, it, it fits it very well. And it gives the Warlock another board clear, which is good because I think Warlocks were always meant to be kind of a, a board clear class, even though it's maybe a little inconsistent. Uh, and it's it was losing a bit of that, right? Like Demon, Demon Flame, I think, the one that deals two damage to everything, kind of kept it going a little, but we needed another one, and Spreading Madness will do the job very well. Doom is the first epic card we're going to talk about, and it destroys all minions, so it's like a Twisting Nether, and you draw a card for each, which is good, because Twisting Nether may be a little cheaper, but let's face it, you're not going to do anything after you Twisting Nether anyway, except hero power, so this just like draws you even more cards. So it's just like flat out better in my opinion. You do have to use it a couple turns later and that's its only downside, but it is better than Twisting Nether. And Twisting Nether is already, I think we have it at like almost an average card. So this is probably an above average card, um, especially with Warlock unable to clear. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's potentially very rewarding. Like the problem with Warlock board clears, like I said, right, is that before you set up the board clear, you're gonna take health damage. So it's kind of, kind of problematic there. Um, but still, this is one of the few ways Warlocks can do hard removal. Uh, and the final one is Renounce Darkness. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about it. Just look at it as this is a card where after you play it, 
um, not only can you no longer draw more cards, but you lose a card because you just played a card and, and two mana for that matter. So, and, and then R RNG happens everywhere. Like, it's definitely not a good card. Um, you're a warlock, right? Be a warlock. Come on, stay true to yourself. Don't turn into something else. That's it for Warlock. Um, overall, I rated a meh. It kind of, there's good things, there's bad things. It's, a lot of consistency has been added to the Warlock class, which I like, and they're all going the same flavors that it was, so Warlock is not, it's not like Paladin, right? It's not like eating into its weaknesses. Its weaknesses are the same, its strengths are the same, it's being fit into a meta where part of its strength, like being able to draw extra card advantage is really good, uh, and being able to get more taunts is really good, but the other part, which is a lot of rather annoying large taunts are coming, um, or just annoying large cards period are coming, and you don't have a hard removal to deal with it, which is kind of bad. Um, so overall, um, I think the class isn't really going to get better or worse, it's, it's meh. So, uh, this video is brought to you by our patrons uh once again uh, thank you guys for feeding the goat and we will do shaman next video see you guys there